Reading and the Brain, Part 3, The Unimportance of Letters. We'll review some stuff. For remember, phonics is not the key to unlocking the reading process. You don't suddenly understand phonics and go, oh, now I can read. For example, the unimportance of letters. You can probably stop the video and read this. I think this is a wonderful class. You're going to be a great uh, special ed teachers. You all um, are amazing human beings. You are also good people. <clears throat> or you are all truly amazing human beings. All right. The letters within each word are mixed up. I can still create meaning. So what does that tell us about the relative unimportance of letters? Here's text with vowels removed, except for the initial vowels. Once upon a time, there was a handsome prince. He lived in a castle, etc., etc., etc. All right? Letters are important, but they're not so important as we uh, once thought. What about vowels versus consonants? We spend a lot of time barking vowel sounds out into the air. This is a sentence with all the consonants removed. Are vowels so important? Hmm, I cannot read that. Here's a sentence with the vowels removed. The Green Bay Packers are the best football team in the NFL. They have a great quarterback. Hmm. What's important? Remember, as we said before, visual uh, data flows two ways. It flows from the eyes to the thalamus, up to the cortex, and down. We do not view letter sounds and put them together. It's not that one way. More information flows down than up. Again, the cortex is the brain responsible for higher thinking and memory. We store patterns up here and we use that to understand. Brain imaging studies again show that 10 times more information flows from the cortex to the thalamus than the thalamus to the cortex. Right? This is the outdated bottom-up view of reading that says reading is sounding out words. Sadly many studies are still based on this outdated view. This is a more updated view, the transactive view of reading. Information in the head transacts with the information on the page or sense data to create meaning. And you here see a representation of about 10 times more information flowing from cortex to thalamus than thalamus up. The cortex is a memory machine. We perceive reality in terms of the stored information or images up here as well. And aside, our memories never replicate reality, they interpret reality. So the transactive model, again, information, head, create, meaning. The phonological model does not account for this two-way flow of information. As well, the phonological model, thinking that reading is simply sounding out words, does not account for or incorporate all three cueing systems. Remember, semantics, syntax, phonics. The phonological model incorporates only one-third of the cueing systems or how our brain creates meaning with print. Transactive model. I'm hitting you hard with this. What's in the head transacts with what's on the page. We use not just the phonological processing system, but we use syntax and semantics to identify words as we read. Reading programs that use this heavy phonics emphasis develop only one-third of the reading brain. Sadly, students with reading disabilities are often force-fed this diet of pure phonics, sounding out words, barking at print like dogs. And as we've seen, efficient readers use minimal letter cues. One of the things we do with struggling readers is to have them read about things with which they're familiar. That is so that they can use the knowledge in their head to create meaning. We use the language experience approach where the student dictates to us, we record it, and they practice reading words and concepts that are stored in their cortex, in their long-term memory. Makes reading easier. As an experiment, Stop the video. In 10 seconds, write as many things as you can 
associated with, not associate, with the word cat. Stop now. Boop. Then, do the same thing. Write as many things as you can associated with, not associate, with a short A sound. Stop. Boop. I am guessing that you are able to do more things related to cat than short A. That's because words are stored in short-term memory, not around letter patterns, but around ideas. Use the powerful way our brain works to create meaning with print. As well, the words that appear on the page for early readers or struggling readers must reflect children's reality. We want to get away from the controlled vocabulary. Controlled vocabulary is damn the man sat on a fan. That's great if you want to reinforce the short A sound, but it is unreal. It makes learning to read harder because no one talks that way. Oh, oh, look, look, see the child, see the child fail, fail, child, fail. That's what happens with the traditional approach. Here endeth three short videos on how the brain creates meaning with print. We will be looking at eye movement in another video.